a humanoid head that looks unsettlingly alive. Fourier's N1 is flipping through kung fu stances like it's auditioning for a martial arts film, and in Poland, Clone Robotics is showing off a corpse-like prototype powered by synthetic muscles. Meanwhile, quietly, but at staggering scale, China is running over 2 million industrial AI robots inside its factories. These machines coordinate in swarms, assemble trucks in minutes, and operate with a level of efficiency that's both breathtaking and a little terrifying. So, let's talk about where we are right now. Unit Tree's G1, the anti-gravity test that stunned engineers. This story starts with Unit Tree. Instead of the usual polished lab demo where a robot carefully shuffles forward and everyone politely claps, the engineers decided to kick the living daylights out of their G1 humanoid. And somehow, it survived over and over again. The secret? Anti-gravity mode. Not real anti-gravity, of course, but a control architecture dedicated to balance and recovery. Most humanoids, when struck, topple like toys. But the G1 predicts impact, braces its body, and absorbs the hit like an athlete. That's possible because it's bristling with depth cameras and 3D LiDAR, giving it a live map of its surroundings. Every joint, each with its own motor, reacts in sync like muscles firing under stress. In one clip, a full sidekick slams into the robot. Instead of face planting, the G1 spreads its stance, leans with torque, and snaps back upright. Another hit drives it to its knees, only for it to spring back up in one fluid motion, lifting its full 77-pound frame. Later, engineers go harder, running kicks, double shoves, even mid-air hits. Each time, the robot scans, recalculates, and resets instantly. That kind of resilience is not for show. It's what factories crave. In an industrial line, even a momentary reset bleeds money. At a price of around $16,000, the G1 is relatively affordable for research labs and work floors where adaptability matters more than acrobatics. And Unit Tree isn't done. CEO Wang Xingxing confirmed at the Global Digital Trade Expo in Huzhou that a full-sized 1.8-meter humanoid will launch in the second half of this year. With Weibo teasers already viral, this fits a larger pattern. China's robotics industry is in hypergrowth. The Ministry of Industry and Information Technology reported that in the first half of 2025, revenue jumped 27.8% year-on-year. Industrial robot output rose 35.6% and service robots by 25.5%. Average company growth, 50 to 100%. That's not steady expansion, that's an explosion. A head forms humanoid head, disturbingly lifelike. If Unitry focuses on resilience, A head form is going after realism. Their demo videos showcase humanoid heads with expressions so human-like they're unnerving. One model glances around with curiosity, blinks naturally, then locks eyes with a presence that unsettles even seasoned engineers. Their ELF series embodies this design philosophy. Robots with expressive faces, moving eyes, synchronized speech, and subtle cues that make interactions feel intelligent. The latest, Zuan, is a static torso figure with a face capable of astonishing emotional range, driven by 30 degrees of freedom in facial actuation and AI-driven gaze control. A brushless motor system allows ultra-quiet, precise muscle movements, capturing the tiny signals we humans instinctively read as emotional truth. Founder Hu Yu Hong predicts that within 10 years, robots will feel almost human to interact with, and in 20 years, walk and work just like us. He admits, though, that perfect human replication is insanely hard. Already, companies like Shanghai Qingbao Engine Robot sell androids to malls, hospitals, and livestream studios. But while the public fixates on lifelike faces, most of the industry is still laser-focused on productivity. Skilled AI's Omnibodied Brain, Chainsaw Torture Test. Then there's Skilled AI. Their latest demo shocked viewers worldwide. An engineer takes a chainsaw to a robot dog's legs, and yet it keeps moving. Why? Because its omnibodied brain wasn't trained on just one design, but on 100,000 different robot bodies. Wheels, legs, stilts, 
broken limbs, the AI had to develop strategies that generalize across hardware. So when the chainsaw desk removed all four limbs, the system improvised, hobbling forward in grotesque but effective fashion. Disturbing? Yes, but the point is clear, a mind decoupled from any single body. That adaptability is what hospitals, factories, and homes will need, machines that can survive the unexpected. Researchers like Jeffrey Laddish argue this could foreshadow a moment when robotics surpass human physicality even as AI surpasses human strategy. Together, that's a future both exhilarating and alarming. And you can't ignore the ethical question. If we keep treating robots as disposable crash dummies, kicking, chaining, sawing them apart, what happens when they begin to think? Next, Fourier's N1 humanoid. Unlike grim torture tests, this demo looks like a martial arts showcase. The N1 cartwheels, spins 360 degrees midair, and lands cleanly. Movements that prove advanced balance recovery and dynamic force control. Fourier, best known for rehab robotics, shifted into humanoids with the GR series. Now the N1, just 1.3 meters tall, 38 kilograms, two-hour battery, sprinting at 3.5 meters per second, is fully open source. Blueprints, control systems, even bills of materials are available for labs and hobbyists. You can order self-assembly kits or full builds. Fourier calls it part of their Nexus ecological matrix. And while the kung fu routine is eye-catching, the real message is that this robot can withstand complex, high-stress motion. Positioned alongside Unitree's lineup, Boston Dynamics Atlas, and Tesla's Optimus, the N1 is carving out its place in the humanoid market. Clone Robotics Protoclone. Corpse-like, powered by muscles. Now to Poland, Clone Robotics Protoclone is unlike anything else because it looks more like a suspended cadaver than a machine. The prototype twitches on cables, its motion powered not by motors, but by synthetic myofiber muscles and a compact hydraulic heart pump. Clone first built a robotic hand with artificial ligaments, then scaled the same biomimetic principles into a full humanoid form. Sensors measure torque, force, and position, while NVIDIA Jetson modules run the controls. A successor, NeoClone, is already planned, adding tactile synthetic skin for delicate tasks. Unsettling? Absolutely. But it's a radical reimagining of what humanoids could be. China's two million robots assembling trucks, running swarms. And behind all these flashy prototypes, China is simply building at scale. Over two million industrial robots now operate in its factories, more than the rest of the world combined. In 2015, robot density was just 49 per 10,000 workers. Today, it's 470. Last year alone, nearly 300,000 new robots were installed, backed by billions under Made in China 2025, plus acquisitions like Germany's KUKA, the ecosystem is now the largest on Earth. These aren't dumb machines either. They handle predictive maintenance, real-time decisions, and collaborative assembly. In Shanghai, humanoids fold laundry and prep food, while swarm systems like DeepSeek R1 coordinate fleets of factory bots over 5G. Some plants now assemble electric trucks in 15 minutes. AI models like Tiangong compute at 550 trillion operations per second. The electronics industry added 83,000 robots in 2024. Autos followed close behind. But with growth comes risk. Experts at Tsinghua University warn that semi-automated lines could be fully intelligent within five years, displacing millions of jobs. This is where robotics stands in 2025. Machines that cartwheel, emote, adapt to chainsaws, twitch like corpses, and scale by the millions. The line between tool and colleague, between machine and something else, is blurring faster than anyone imagined. So the question is, are we building the future we want, or just the one we can't stop?